I am outside Westminster Cathedral where thousands of faithful were gathered to pay their last respect to Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor. Before the funeral, I had the joy to speak with the actual Archbishop of Westminster, Cardinal Vincent Nichols, as well as Francis Campbell, former British ambassador to the Holy See. Both of them reminds us the personality and the legacy of Cardinal Murphy O'Connor. Take a look. One thing about Cardinal Cormac consistent through his life was his love for the church and his love for the particular church, for his diocese, whether it was Arundel and Brighton or Westminster. So I, when I came here, there was a great sense of a diocesan family, of people being known to each other and wanting to work together and his desire to foster that and also then to foster the life of faith in the parishes particularly through the work and the establishment of small faith sharing groups. They were some of the things that were very important to him. And then, as we will see in the Mass this morning, he had a, a great dedication to the work of ecumenism and trying to build br bridges and bring our churches together. I mean, this goes back a long way, so it was inspired initially by Pope Paul VI, uh, and, and it was a, an in-depth theological discussion so he was one of the first chairman of the Archic Commissions uh, and his co-chairman Mark Santa will be here today from all those years ago. And they built lasting foundations of understanding between our churches on which we flourish particularly in the outreach to the poor and in the attentiveness to some of the crises in society today. The other dimension I think was just the humanity he brought to the role. He never took himself too seriously. He, uh, you know, with, uh, in, a, in a time when, you know, people talk about church reform or they talk about the Curia, Cardinal Cormac had friends right across the spectrum within the church and beyond, and indeed uh, was as comfortable in Rome as he was here in London. So he'd be greatly missed. He, he loved Rome, he loved the Holy See. Uh, he was a student in Rome, he was rector of the Venerable English College in Rome. So he felt very much at home uh, in Rome though he did say it was like a fine wine that was to be sipped and not gulped down. Uh, but his commitment was shown, for example, he was vice president of the Council of the Conferences for European Bishops Conferences, and he served that. And he also had a part in a number of the congregations in Rome. Clearly, uh, he took part in the conclave that elected Pope Benedict, uh, but he just passed his 80th birthday by the time it came to uh, Pope Benedict stepping down in the next conclave. But he was there and he talked and he uh, had his views and I'm sure uh, in his persuasive way uh, brought his insights to bear. He was very comfortable regardless of which environment you put him in. So if you put him in a royal environment or a political environment or you know out in the middle of a school, uh, he was very much a larger than life figure. He had been uh, in the Second Vatican Council as a priest. He'd been rector of the English College, which is the seminary in Rome for uh, the training of priests for England and Wales. And then a bishop here in the south coast of England. So he was someone that was known very well within the Catholic community and indeed nationally here. And also he was someone who played quite strong on his Irish roots. Both parents were Irish. He was born here in Britain. But he also had a time of uh, tremendous rapprochement between the United Kingdom and Ireland during that period. And having a Cardinal Archbishop here, uh, you know, during those years, meant that he made huge strides with the government and huge strides with the royal family to make sure that Catholicism was fully integrated into, into the state. Uh, yesterday, Tuesday, we received the body of Cardinal Cormac into the church at 10 o'clock. And there's been a day of prayer and then at five o'clock last night, there was a solemn Vespers for the dead, which was, in my view, exceptionally beautiful and peaceful. And now this morning, there is the solemn funeral mass beginning at midday. Uh, the cathedral will be full. Uh, there are many, many invited guests. Uh, his family is big. There'll be 90 plus members of his family and representatives from the parishes of the diocese and from the secondary schools and sixth form colleges of the diocese. And then when the funeral mass is complete, then we will bury the body of Cardinal Cormac. 
actually at the foot of the tenth station on some of those sections of the floor of the cathedral that are in, in between the main nave and the side corridor. The, and he will be there in a spot very close to the chapel of St. Patrick, which was what he wanted. It was the spot he chose. And he will be there uh, in parallel, just down from Cardinal Heenan and just across from Cardinal Hume. And people will pass his tomb every day. And I'm sure they will remember and whisper a prayer for the repose of his soul. He, had, he faced some difficulties, as everybody does, uh, but he never lost that capacity to, as it were, sink a bit deeper into the reality of faith and his love for the church and know that he would be carried. Uh, he was very fond of the quotation from Pope Benedict when he was stepping down, when he spoke of his experience of being at the helm of the church through very stormy seas, but never losing his, his sense that Christ was present even if he seemed to be asleep. And those were words that resonated very closely with the spirit, the heart and the soul of Cardinal Cormac. As you were all able to see, Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor was a great example of what it means to reach out to the peripheries. May his legacy be an example for all of us. I'm Francis Denny for Salt and Light in Westminster City.